Rallying in Rise of Kingdoms is extremely important and in today's video I will be discussing the best rallies in Rise of Kingdoms. I will go over every single troop type. I will discuss the best infantry rallies, the best cavalry rallies and the best archer rallies. Along with this I'll tell you which rallies are actually meta and which troop type is slightly further behind on rallying. So if you're interested in seeing the best rallies for Rise of Kingdoms and maybe you're a rally leader looking for some combinations, you want to stick around till the end of the video. Now let's start off today's video by discussing the infantry rallies. And when I look at the infantry rally scene right now, I've noticed there are only really two pairs. And to be honest, these two pairs are not very overpowered. The first one you have is Tarek with Pakal. This is probably the strongest infantry rally. The main thing it has going for it is Pakal, and that's because Pakal is very anti-swarm. We know Pakal's kit, he can take a couple hits and he's going to be perfectly fine. And Tarek as a commander, he's got very good single target damage. He's also got extra single target damage on his expertise. I think it's actually almost like, it's like a revenge damage to be honest. And then he's got a decent amount of stats. We look at the rest of his stats, they're all fairly strong. Also pretty good on the open field as well. So Tarek's a very strong commander. Pakal though is a little bit outdated. Though when we look at other infantry commanders, can't really rally with CPO and then commanders like Flavius, Gorgo, Lao Che, all those commanders don't really work in rallying. So Pakal is one of the best options, in my opinion, the best option as a secondary to Tarek. And we know Pakal, absolute anti-swarm god. Everything in his kit is all about just getting anti-swarm, dealing counter-attack, dealing just white damage, really. He's got some okay damage factor. It's kind of low, but it's damage factor nonetheless. And to be honest, this is going to be your best rally to use if, let's say, the open field is just fully overrun by enemies and for whatever reason you want to launch a rally, maybe you're trying to divert them, using a Tarek Pakal is going to give them a nice basically beat down whenever they attack it. So Tarek Pakal, it's certainly got its uses, but in my opinion, you wouldn't really rally with a Tarek Pakal if you're going to try and destroy a flag. I've never really seen the rally win in those situations, especially if you're up against an enemy who can field the flag well, the rally is usually going to trade either just average one to one, if not negative. So Tarek with Pakal, it's good for anti-swarm, it's good to kind of get your enemies to move somewhere else, but it's not the best rally for actually burning flags because it's got lower damage, Pakal himself is very outdated, and Tarek is desperately in need of another rally commander. The other infantry rally pair is Tarek with Sargon. These both haven't changed since my last video. Sargon is actually a stronger rally commander than Pakal for DPS. In terms of anti-swarm, he hasn't got as much, but Sargon's crazy single target damage definitely does make up for the lack of damage on Pakal and we know that Sargon also does have a lot of skill damage increases with his ord effects so he's definitely a powerful rally especially in longer situations but he's also pretty swarmable because when we look at Tarek's kit he doesn't have the most anti-swarm he's got some things of course but and also Sargon doesn't have it either so if they get swarmed down they're gonna go down pretty quickly though this would be your DPS infantry rally so if your kingdom's low on archers or low on calves and you need a rally to kill a flag, this rally can get it done, and it won't trade too poorly. But keep in mind, if your enemies swarm it at all, it's probably going to go down, and if they keep the flag full pretty well, this rally probably wouldn't be able to just nuke that flag out. So you'd have to swarm it, but then again, you might not get the best trade if it's a full flag. So that's your biggest issue with Tarek and Sargon. It's a very long-running rally. means that you'll get usually a good trade if you can do it right, but if you mess up, it's going to be a really bad trade, and also it's a bit difficult to burn a flag with Tarek Sargon as well, because the infantry rallies are just a little bit weaker and a little bit outdated. Now moving into cavalry rallies, we're going to start looking at some of the stronger rallies in the game, and in my opinion, probably one of, if not the strongest rallies in the game, is definitely the Nevsky with Justinian combo. There is a lot of synergy with these commanders, Justinian being a very, very powerful rally commander, he has stuff like cavalry health bonuses, he's got normal damage reductions, which means he's going to take, obviously, reduced damage when he gets swarmed, not to mention he also has ways to make the target become surrounded. When we look at his active skill, he's able to just, if a target is not surrounded, change the number of troops to three. And why is that good? Well, to be honest, I'm pretty sure with Nevsky's active skill here, he basically is able to get a guaranteed max defense reduction, even if you're not swarming the flag. You can see here, you can see here defense reduction equals number of troops surrounding the target times 15%, up to three troops. And if Justinian says the target is being surrounded by three troops, 
Well, then instantly Nevsky's debuff is just at 45%. So he's basically fully ramped up there. Not to mention, we already know Nevsky's just single target, crazy DPS, and actually has got some pretty good, not anti-swarm, but tankiness in his kit. And then obviously, if you just put him with Justinian, the strongest cavalry rally commander at the moment, it's going to trade really well. Do keep in mind, there's kind of an overlap here with the defenses. But to be fair, when Nevsky throws his active skill, then Justinian throws his, there is a fairly big buffer time before the defense debuffs do come into effect. So Justinian's defense debuff is not completely useless. It will actually be used every now and again. But to be honest, this rally is really here for crazy single target damage. And it's got some okay anti-swarm, but it can get swarmed down really quickly. So do keep in mind, you want some field presence when you're rallying with Nevsky Justinian. Otherwise, you're going to notice this rally will melt. But if it is able to just run out and rally for the whole time, it's going to trade really well. I've even seen in my KVK Nevsky Justinians beating Gorgo Garrison. So Nevsky Justinian definitely was the absolute meta rally before Shobani Pal. They're probably around equal now when I speak about the other combinations. But Nevsky Justinian, very solid rally. The other rally which I will discuss is Attila with Takeda. This is probably not the second strongest cav rally, but it's one of the stronger ones. And this rally is super, super old. And the only reason this rally is really good well, actually, there's two reasons. The first one is it's probably the best city rally in the game for a big city. Attila Takeda is going to slowly kill that city until it's just gone. So if you keep an Attila Takeda rally full on a city, they can lose like 20 million power in one rally, depending on how high their power was before. This is because Attila Takeda deals no damage factor. It's all about just normal white damage. And you'll notice that's really, really powerful. The amount of damage you can just deal to a basically city over a whole rally is ridiculous. You'll see stuff like 20,000 damage white numbers coming out of Attila Takeda on just like a normal fight. So it's insane how strong Attila Takeda can be. And as a rally, as long along with this, because of his crazy high white numbers, if you swarm Attila Takeda, the trade is instantly amazing for that rally. So whenever this rally gets swarmed, boom, instantly amazing trade. So if you do stuff like, even this sounds weird, but if you rally a barbarian fort with Attila Takeda, into enemy territory and they swarm the rally instantly they get like max hospitals sometimes they take deads if you rally flags with it obviously it's not going to trade the best against the flag but people who swarm the rally instantly are going to start taking dead so Attila Takeda definitely has its strengths as an anti-swarm and city rally in terms of flags and forts and passes it's not the most amazing but counter rallies especially in city rallies it's going to do very powerful counter rallies probably where it shines the most and is most used but as a city rally, it is also extremely strong. And a flag rally, it does okay sometimes. But it's probably not your number one pick nowadays. I'd rather something like a Nevsky Justinian. One other combination I would like to mention with Attila is Attila with Justinian. This is a weirder combination, but I've seen it done a few times. And it works okay. It's not my number one pick. Certainly not my number one. Same thing with Attila Nevsky. But they're both anti-swarm rallies with some DPS. So if you need some okay DPS for whatever reason, Attila Nevsky and Attila Justinian will both work, but they're not my number one picks to keep in mind, and they have their uses, but they're pretty rare to see. So I'd mainly stick with that Attila Takeda for counter rallies and city rallies, and the Nevsky Justinian for just rallying flags, forts, and passes. Now moving on to the archer rallies. These are, in my opinion, the strongest troop type right now for rallying in general. They may not have the strongest rally. Justinian Nevsky is still, sorry, Nevsky Justinian is still really powerful, but with archers, they are almost unchecked nowadays because Cavs Definitely have the weakest garrison right now. They've only got Yanziska with Heraclius. And I think Cavs are going to need a new garrison very soon, which they should be getting within the next few commanders. But because archers don't really have an OP garrison that are countering them, they are going to be really good just for rallying anything nowadays. They can do okay against the Cavs. Not going to trade amazingly, but they can do pretty well. Not only do well against Cavs, they destroy infantry, and against the Archer garrisons, they do pretty well. The thing is, we don't really see Archers that often, so a show of our rallies are almost going to be immortal against most garrisons, which means Archers probably, in my opinion, are the strongest rally troop. And when you look at the rallies right now, coming in at number one for Archers, it's just a show of with Henry. The two strongest rally commanders for Archers will work against just about any garrison. Henry is very anti-swarm as well. That's something you definitely want with a rally. And a Shobani Pal is not so anti-swarm. So giving them both that difference in like, Shobani Pal is all there to deal extra damage, more damage, extra damage factor, tons of skill damage bonuses. Henry's here to just be a tanky little pest. So you're going to notice a Shobani Pal with Henry is a really strong rally. It's got good DPS. It can take out Gorgo garrisons fairly decently, especially with a Shobani Pal's massive amounts of normal damage reductions. And Henry's expertise actually does allow him to take 20% less normal damage for the majority of a fight. When he has over 70% rage, he deals more damage. But when he's below it, he takes less normal damage. So Henry, definitely a strong, strong commander for rallying against Gorgos. To keep in mind, though, 
He does have a skill damage reduction on his active skill. That's not the most important against the Gorgo, but against the Swarm, this is going to be nice. He's also got revenge damage, which definitely helps with his swarming and crazy amounts of counter attack as well. A Shabani Power, crazy single target and AoE damage. Good for anti-swarm, good for just getting free sev wounds. He's also got some decent amounts of defense or mainly attack here because you're usually on territory when you're rallying. He's also dealing extra skill damage bonuses. And whenever his troops use an active skill, they basically just take 20% less normal damage for 3 seconds, which means if you can get a faster rage cycle than Gorgo, which can be difficult, or you can get your rage cycle to line up differently, you're going to notice that this normal damage reduction actually does make Gorgo a lot weaker. And finally, he has a few things in terms of increasing his skill damage up to, I think it's almost 30%, which is really, really good. He also does have normal damage reductions here, and his expertise is just insane with the amount of stats he can gain. So a Shobani power with Henry... Really strong rally against just about anything. Coming in at number two, we have Henry with Gilgamesh or Ashurbani Pal with Gilgamesh. And the reason this rally comes in at number two is because for specific infantry garrisons, this rally just destroys it. I've heard people saying that Henry with Gilgamesh against Gorgo and Xenos was insanely good. So Xeno Gorgo against Henry Gilgamesh, it's going to get destroyed. And also Ashurbani Pal with Gilgamesh is also going to be a strong rally. Keep in mind though, Ashurbani Pal with Gilgamesh. There isn't as much anti-swarm, so you probably want field presence, but this rally should theoretically trade a little bit better than the Henry with the Gilgamesh. Also keep in mind, Gilgamesh has his own normal damage reductions, which are fairly strong as well, which means against the Gorgo, he's going to do pretty decent. It's up to a 15% less normal damage as well. Keep in mind though, Gilgamesh isn't the most meta rally right now. He's only really used for those garrisons that have something like a Zenobia in it. And maybe even a Constantine. I mean, Constantine with Gorgo, it's a very strong rally, a garrison, sorry. But I think Constantine's healing isn't as prominent as Zenobia's, so Gilgamesh can't really benefit as much here, but he can deal some extra damage every now and again. So Constantine has his uses in garrisons, obviously. And then I think Gilgamesh is an okay counter to Constantine's, but you'd rather rally a Gilgamesh into a Zenobia combo instead. Also, keep in mind that a Shurbani power with Gilgamesh is probably the weaker of a Henry and Gilgamesh because, like I said, there's less anti-swarm. But if you have field presence, this rally can be pretty good. The third rally I would like to mention is a Shobani Power with Zhu Lang. And this rally is probably up there with some of the best in the game if you have total field control. This rally is just going to melt the garrison. I know I said it probably wouldn't work, and I still stand by the fact that it's not the most practical rally. But if you have full field presence and you rally a Shobani Power with Zhu Lang, Anything within like a 5 meter radius is A, gonna die, and B, everything inside the garrison, inside the pass, is just gone. So a Shobani Power with Zhu Lang is crazy skill damage, it's got AoE as well. Zhu Lang has no anti-swarm at all, he's got pretty much no defensive stats, but you'll notice a Shobani Power as a rally commander with Zhu Lang, it's gonna nuke a ton of things. Also, Zhu Lang increases skill damage, and obviously with a Shobani Power's AoE, that is just a nice thing to have. Also, we'll notice Zhu Lang has an okay rage engine on his expertise, which means you're able to trigger a Shobani Power's expertise a few more times during a rally fight. And as the rally ramps up, you're going to deal more skill damage, which means that Zhu Lang's AoE does even more damage. So there's a ton of potential with the Shobani Power's Zhu Lang March, but only really if you have total field presence, which can be very difficult to achieve. The fourth rally for archers, and it's the last one I'm going to talk about today, is the Zhu Lang with Henry combination. Henry, really, really anti-swarm target. Don't really want to hit him and then put Zulang with Henry. It's going to be a fairly strong rally. Keep in mind though, this rally isn't going to be the best in a higher seed KVK. Still definitely going to get swarmed down because another rally like let's say Henry with Gilgamesh or Henry with even Boudicca has a lot more anti-swarm than it does with the Zulang. So Zulang rallies always are going to get swarmed. But if you have field presence and you don't have an Ashurbani pile available, Zulang with Henry is certainly still a good option and it's going to destroy a garrison. And also, it's going to be a fairly good rally just to deal AoE damage onto targets who walk past. So, Zulang with Henry has got its strengths and it's got its weaknesses, but it's certainly one of the better rallies if you have field presence and are able to keep it from getting swarmed. One last thing I would like to mention here is that a lot of KVKs nowadays do include like a troop swap where you can change the stats on commanders. And for rallying, this applies in the same way. And when I look at all these rally commanders, there's tons of ways you can mix and mash them. For example, I think a Shurbani Pal with Justinian actually wouldn't be the worst Cav or Archer Rally, depending on which way you put that. Not to mention, also, I think Tarek gets a lot more value in those KVKs because you, you can do stuff like a Tarek with a Henry or Tarek with a Shurbani Pal or Tarek with Justinian. And that means infantry rallies do become a lot more viable than they are in a normal KVK. I feel this is worth mentioning. I think there's now like two or three KVK formats which allow you to switch the troop type on at least one commander. So some of those rallies 
are actually fairly strong. Personally, I haven't played those KVKs in a while. Haven't really been able to look at some of those rally pairings, but being able to switch up some of these commanders, for example, making Tarek a Cav or Archer commander, or making a Cav or Archer rally into an infantry rally, does give infantry a lot more power, and also does make Tarek much more usable. Do keep in mind, it does also give a Shobani power more value, and Gilgamesh is able to pair with a few other rallies against those niche garrisons. So maybe you switch Justin into Archers, and you run Justinian Gilgamesh if you don't have a Henry. I mean, these are very rare situations, but it is worth mentioning that any of the rally commanders I really mentioned in today's video can be mixed and mashed into different rallies to fight against a certain garrison. So they're not locked in with just their specific troop types, because maybe a rally like a Tarek with a Gilgamesh is really strong, and I just don't know it. Also, do keep in mind that Attila, as a rally for a switching commander thing, is really good with the Henry as anti-swarm and arguably is slightly better than the Takeda. So if you're looking for an anti-swarm counter rally, then Attila Henry is actually fairly strong and I've seen a few reports of it. I've even got a video where I look at a report and everything. So Attila with Henry is actually pretty good when you switch the troop type for it. Do keep in mind though, the rallies for switching troop types often will trade slightly worse than if those commanders stuck with their same troop type because Lilith made these commanders to be just for that one troop type and to just trade well with that troop. So there's a lot of synergy with commanders like let's say Tarek and Infantry and Henry with Archers, but when you switch up those commanders, they don't have as much synergy with Cavs and Infantry, but they can still do really well. I think that at this point though, if you're looking for a switched up rally, Pakal is pretty much out of the game, which is why I find this definitely worth mentioning. You wouldn't really rally a Tarek Pakal if you have the option to switch up maybe a Henry or a Justinian and put them with the Tarek instead. So I just thought infantry definitely get a lot more power when you're able to switch troops and it was worth mentioning. So now that we've made it to the end of today's video, I would like to say that by the time you're watching this, I'm probably in Vietnam, not even in Australia anymore, and I'll be back in like 10 or so days, but that means comments and everything you guys leave down below, I'll still try to reply to them. I don't know what my Wi-Fi access is going to be like. All these videos are pre-recorded and set to upload every three days, so you guys will still get videos while I'm away. But keep in mind, I won't be as active in terms of replying to comments, and on the Discord, I won't be as active either. But I'll try to be active depending on if I've got Wi-Fi or not and where I do have Wi-Fi. So I'll try to be as active as possible, but there's no guarantees. Now, I just want to say thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.